Welcome to chapter six. Okay, we are going to start today with a review of the skeletal system. Okay, it forms the physical foundation of the body and is composed of 206 bones that vary in size and shape and are connected by movable and immovable joints. The primary functions of the skeletal system are to give shape and support to the body, protect various internal structures and organs, serve as attachments for muscles and act as levers to produce body movement. They help produce both white and red blood cells, which is one of the functions of bone marrow, and store most of the body's calcium supply as well as phosphorus, magnesium, and sodium. A joint is the connection between two or more bones of the skeleton. There are two types of joints, movable, such as elbows, knees, and hips, and immovable, such as the joints found in the pelvis and skull, which allow little or no movement. Bones of the skull. Okay, I'm going to try and... You know what? I'm just going to go grab the doll. Bones of the skull. Let's see if I can do her. Can we... Oh, look! Woo! Okay, she's a little too close. Anyway, the... Uh... Skeleton of the head is divided into two parts. I really can't see at all what this is doing. So, we're just going to have to play it by ear a little bit. Let me put her back here. Okay. The cranium is an oval bony case that protects the brain. And the facial skeleton is the framework of the face that is composed of 14 bones. All right, most of you have done hair cutting with me, so you're going to know a lot of these bones already. And then I'm just going to try and close up this camera a little bit to, uh, oh, sorry, don't want to make anybody sick doing this. All right, so let's bring her in a little bit. You can maybe see some of what I've got drawn on her face, which you'll obviously be able to see at the school. Okay. So the occipital bone, you guys know that's on the back of her head. Um, we use that to part off a lot for um, our hair cutting. It's the hindmost bone of the skull below the parietal bones and it forms the back of the skull above the nape. The parietal bones form the sides and top of the cranium. There are two parietal bones. Okay, they're up there on the top. Um, you, you also know that we part those off to form our to keep the sides and the top separate, right? For our hair cutting. Frontal bones form the forehead. There it is. Frontal right there. Okay. Frontal bones, that's your forehead. Um Sorry, I'm getting lost. Temporal bones. They're actually on the side which I drew it on. Oh, I cannot get to her side. Um it is drawn on her, promise you. Um, they are the sides of the head in the ear region. There are two of those. Okay, The ethmoid bone is a light spongy bone between the eye sockets. Oh, You can see it. I've got them. Maybe I don't have that one in there. It's between the eye sockets. It forms part of the nasal cavities. And then the sphenoid bone joins all the bones of the cranium together. Let me back that up. Okay, we aren't on those rest of those face ones yet, so. Okay. The bones of the face. Now we're at those. Okay, nasal bones. They're drawn. Woo, I just keep going back and forth on the sides of her nose there. They form the bridge of the nose. The lacrimal bones are the two small thin bones located at the front inner wall. I don't know if you can see that where I kind of do an arrow to the front in between her eyes there, like right close to the tear ducts. Um, they fall, form the, they're located at the front inner wall of the orbits. Zygomatic bones, yep, that one right there, you can see that, that's your cheekbones, okay. Two small thin bones located at the front inner wall of the orbits. Oh, sorry, um, <laughs> zygomatic, I was on, I was back to lacrimal. Zygomatic bones, also called malar or cheekbones, form the prominence of the cheeks. <clears throat> Maxillae, those are the bones of the upper jaw. 
and the mandible is the lower jawbone. Okay, it is the largest and strongest. Whoa, lost you. Bone of the face. Let me get back. I'm going the wrong way. There she is. Okay, bones of the neck. I do not have these drawn on her. The hyoid bone is the U-shaped bone at the base of the tongue that supports the tongue and its muscle. It is the one and only bone of the throat. Okay, that's the only one of the throat. I'm going to try and put this back down because I'm just going to have it all over the place otherwise. Oop, wrong way. There we go. You can see I've got a bunch of stuff here, but it's all too small to really see on the camera. Okay. And then you have cervical vertebrae, which are in the neck region. Of course, it's on the back. Um, the seven bones at the top part of the vertebral column. Okay, that's in the back of your neck, called cervical vertebrae. The bones of the chest, shoulder, and back. Oh, I've got her right in the way of all that, too. Okay, the thorax, also known as the chest or pulmonary trunk. Okay, this is the sternum, the ribs, the thoracic vertebrae. It's an elastic, bony cage that serves as a protective framework for the heart, lungs, and other internal organs. Okay, the thorax contains all of this stuff. So when you're asked a question about the bony cage, don't say the ribs because it really is the thorax. The ribs are part of it. Okay, so the ribs are 12 pairs of bones forming the wall of the thorax. The scapula is also known as your shoulder blade. It's the large flat triangular bone of the shoulder. Okay, you have two of those and they're called scapulae. The sternum, also known as the breastbone, is the flat bone that forms the front support of the ribs. And then the clavicle, you have two of those, or one I, you know, comes all the way across, is known as the collarbone, and it joins the sternum and the scapula. Okay, bones of the arms and hands. Okay, the humerus is the uppermost and largest bone in the arm, extending from the elbow to the shoulder. The ulna is the inner and larger bone in the forearm, of your lower arm attached to the wrist and located on the side of the little finger. Okay, the ulna is on the little finger. The radius is on the same side as your thumb. All right, um, there are pictures of this in your book. So, carpus is also known as your wrist. It is a very flexible joint, you know that, composed of a group of eight small irregular bones, which are called carpals. They're held together by ligaments. And then metacarpus are the bones of the palm of the hand, parts of the hand containing five bones between the carpus and phalanges. Okay, let me get this. This one maybe I can get from just sitting right on there. Oh, maybe not. Okay, you can see I took one of our school hands and drew on it. Okay, so you've got the, um, the ulna on the little finger side, the radius in it's it's kind of a bright orange hot pinky color but it's not showing up that color on this so um but that is the radius on the thumb side okay the carpus all those little red dots those are your carpus or carpals they're held together by ligaments metacarpus are the bones of the palm okay those are those five bones that you can feel and then phalanges, also known as digits, are the bones of the fingers or the toes. They're the same. There are three phalanges in each finger and two in the thumb. Okay. Oh, there we are. Phalanges. Let me back up again. Can I even get to that? Can't really see it. I hope you guys can see some of that. I have two of these. Um, I actually picked these up at um, Northwest up there in Maryville in their bookstore. So not a bad thing to have if you're going into anything that requires you. Uh, every system is in this little anatomy thing. So just so you know. All right. <clears throat> bones of the leg, ankle, and foot. The four bones of the leg. 
The femur is the heavy long bone that forms the leg above the knee. The tibia is the larger of the two bones that form the leg below the knee. Okay, the fibula is the smaller of the two bones that form the leg below the knee. And then the patella, which is your kneecap, okay, also known as an accessory bone or kneecap, the patella. Those are the four bones of your legs. Okay, the ankle joint is made up of three bones. The tibia and the fibula from the bottom of your leg, excuse me, and then the talus. The talus is also known as your ankle bone, and it is the third bone of the ankle joint. The foot itself is made up of 26 bones, and you, these are subdivided into three general categories. So tarsal bones, um, there are seven. The talus, oh, calcaneus, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, which is your heel. Okay, so your talus, your heel, navicular, there are three cuneiform bones, and the cuboid. Again, I believe there's a pretty good picture in your book of this. So um, I didn't make a lot of extra notes on this because I, there was pictures. Um, metatarsals are the long and slender bones similar to the metacarpal, metacarpal bones of the hand. There are five, just like there's five in your hand. Okay, and then phalanges. There are 14 bones that compose the toes. Toe phalanges are really very pretty much the same as the finger phalanges. There are three phalanges in each toe, except for the big toe, which only has two. Alrighty, so that is it for bones. That is, that's a lot of bones to learn. Try and find um, a way that works for you. You, you know, you might want to look some of this stuff up on YouTube things or just Google the skeletal system and just see what you get um, because it, you do, it's a lot to know. And without being in class, I can't keep coming back and reviewing these things. So, um, I mean, obviously they're going to be on YouTube for you to review, but, um, you know, some, some sections of this are going to be harder than others. So, again, this was really not a very long video, but again, a lot, a lot, a lot of information. So, um, just one little reminder, just because it's still up here, so I can put it up here. I hope it's not glaring too much. Okay, we are going to be going over all of these systems, okay, all the body systems. Muscular, respiratory, skeletal we did today, nervous, integumentary, circulatory, endocrine, reproductive, lymphatic, and immune, expiratory, and digestive. So every day we'll be going over, or every video, um, some of them I will put together, but like I said, the skeletal, there's a lot of information, and the muscular, there's a lot of information. Um, the rest of them, isn't, they aren't quite as long, so I'll probably lump some of those together, and um, you'll just have to watch the videos a lot of times to catch it all. So you guys have a good day.